In today's video, I want to show you a step-by-step -step process of how to take an Apple Watch and replace the battery. There seems to be a certain stigma that the Apple Watches carry as far as techs feeling unconfident in their abilities to work on them. My goal in this video is to help you overcome that. Let's get started. Having the right tools sure makes a huge difference when repairing these Apple Watches. One of the tools that I recommend is this curved screen disassembler tool by Quan Lee. Over time, they do tend to become bent, deformed. They're extremely inexpensive though, so they're still useful even in a condition like this as the edges are extremely flexible, very thin, and can slide in between the display and the frame without scratching the frame and without breaking the glass. The first thing that I'm going to do is take the edge of this and push it down on the edge of the, the screen. And I don't wanna go all the way down because on all Apple Watches, there is a gasket or a force touch that acts as a gasket as well that, that, that is sandwiched between the screen and the frame. And we wanna leave it intact on the frame if we can. So I won't push it all the way down. I'll push it down just to where the edge of the pry tool gets under the edge of the glass and will start to pry. It may slip a few times, but eventually you'll find that depth where it'll start to actually lift up the edge of the watch. And then I'm going to get a piece of plastic also about the same thickness. This plastic is about the same thickness as the uh, the pry tool. And I'm going to get that right in between the glass and that gasket. Let me turn this watch back off. Let's take this under some magnification so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, now that I have the plastic in there, I can carefully slide up the sides. Now, one thing to note, right where the curve stops on the short sides, that span between where the curve kind of stops and the other side, there is a, a flex cable on both sides, one for the display, one for the digitizer on the majority of the the watches. And so the plastic can't go in too far. Otherwise, you're, you, the plastic, even the plastic being soft can still damage the flex cables. And if we're just doing a battery repair, we don't want to have to be replacing the screen as well. So as you approach the side, the edges, you need to be aware of the distance uh, the, the plastic is inside. The width of the, the gasket itself is probably around a 16th of an inch. And so what we need to do is get the plastic out so that only about a 16th of an inch is left inside as we round those corners. and slide past the this edge of the display. If the plastic I can kind of visualize where the tip of the plastic edge is in there and I know that I'll be clear of the display so I can turn the corner and slide down that side. Now this is a Series 4 44 millimeter. If you are working with the Series 6, the flex cables are going to be in a different position. Uh, the main flex cables were not we're trying not to damage are still in the same spot, but where the flex cables that go to the display from the motherboard are positioned, it's different. So you got to keep that in mind so you don't damage them as well. But the 4, the 5, the SE, SE second gen, all of those are, are going to be in the same position. Slide down the side. Try not to go in too deep on the short edge. And there we go. The hard part is over. If you've got it this far with the gasket intact or the force touch intact depending on the model you're working on uh, then you're more than halfway there as far as the difficulty is concerned now if you don't have one of these bottles get yourself one they're the flux bottles 
at mobilecentrics.com. Come with a really fine needle and you can put in there really anything. And I have isopropyl alcohol and go fill that back up. There we go. You can use a heat plate to assist in this process if you'd like, or you can do it cold like I'm gonna do here. But it basically consists of allowing the isopropyl alcohol to loosen the adhesive behind the flex cables here that are holding down the display. And if you look, it naturally, that I'm not putting really any tension at all. And the black double-sided adhesive is naturally letting go of the back of the display. On the 40 millimeters, there'll be a piece of the adhesive that jets out on either side that you'll have to kind of pick at and pry up. On the 44 millimeters like this one, there won't be, and it'll naturally want to come up. You may need to add more isopropyl alcohol as it evaporates, but it'll naturally want to come up. And you can let this come up itself. You can help it along gently with a spudger as well. You don't want to you don't want to go too rough on it though. Take your time. Once I can get my fingers in there, I can be a little bit more aggressive with it as we don't want to tug because the solder joints on these flex cables down under the battery are not as strong as I would have wished Apple would have made them. Apple didn't use a lot of solder on them. They are really small, so I I don't blame them to be honest. Next, we're going to carefully peel back these stickers that are covering up the ZIF connectors for the display, the digitizer, and the NFC pad. You add a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and it'll kind of loosen up the adhesive. These stickers are extremely delicate. They will become deformed, especially on the Series 5. There we go. And carefully get under there and lift up the latch on each one of the connectors. And then gently, firmly pull the connectors out. You don't want to put any tension in that direction. You want all of the force to go parallel with the screen when you pull these out like that. The plastic on top of these connectors is pretty weak and it can break. Now that the screen is off, we can move on to extracting the battery. A little pry tool like this works perfectly. I'm going to wedge it down gently in between the Taptic engine and the battery and we'll put a little bit of tension on it. There is some really thick double-sided adhesive that holds this down. I'm going to add some isopropyl alcohol right there to the edge and let it kind of seep under and activate that adhesive to let go. And we'll just let the tension lift the battery. It's not like we're prying this out with much force. It's gonna to wanna to come out on its own when it's ready. Just got one finger barely pushing on the tool there. Add a little bit more isopropyl alcohol. If it's not budging at all, you can see it slowly start to lift there. I've got it up enough that I can actually put the needle down on the adhesive itself. And a nice uh, little couple drops there. And if you're uncomfortable using a tool like that, you can always use a spudger as well, as it's not metal, but there we go. It's separated. Now we'll notice that there is a sticker here. Right, right there, right where I'm touching the sticker, there's a screw. It's one of Apple's tri-wing screws. I just stab right through the sticker there and twist it off. That sticker kind of holds the screw in place so that it's harder to lose. Now I'm going to take my spudger to go and disconnect it. These connectors are also fairly weak on the board, so you don't want to just zoom in under the battery here. If you go in under the battery, it'll put a lot of sideways tension on that connector, and a lot of the times they pop away from the board, and the only way to get a new one back on there is to solder it back on. So come in on the side and lift up causing it to come straight up and out instead of putting sideways tension on the connector. Before we install the battery, I like to go around the border and clean up any ad adhesive. And I like to use this tool here. It can also be used to clean up the adhesive on the screen. You can see how fast it works. This adhesive tends to kind of break. Let me just show you what I mean. You can pull at the adhesive, but it just, it kind of just breaks every time you put any tension on it. All right, you can kind of try to maybe roll it off with your finger. See, so just it just it's just really annoying. So take this though, 
and just zip on down the side. Leaves a nice clean surface and pulls up the adhesive right away. Just like that. Now we can go the extra mile by getting a, a small pick like this. I use this for so many different things, picking away the underfill to remove like a CPU or the Wi-Fi IC, other, other ICs on a logic board when soldering, or also just simply scraping out the gunk that tends to collect in between the gasket and the frame over time from whoever's wearing the watch. Now, obviously this step is not necessary, but it's just one of those things that it's satisfying to a certain degree. Now using some isopropyl alcohol or even acetone or, or some of the Falcon 530 to clean up. I'm gonna go around and we're gonna prep the force touch gasket to receive the screen again by getting it nice and clear and free of all debris. Making sure none of the old adhesive is on there, which most of it ended up on that screen. It can mean clean up really easy. There we go. We'll get ourselves our new battery here. Comes with a little protector on the back. We'll peel that away. And this, uh, this plastic right here would be a good alternative to having something like this. It's a little thinner, but it also has that nice rigid edge. So, you know, not a bad idea to hold on to that piece of plastic for the next time you do a battery. Or if you don't have that piece of plastic and you're doing a battery, there you go. Go ahead and take it and connect it. Like that. We will grab our bracket with the screw. And put that in place. Gently set the battery in place. And if you have the old adhesive, I'd recommend removing it to give this battery the most amount of space it can have. Ours just happened to stay on the old battery. You want to make sure these stickers don't get caught in the connectors. We'll peel those down. I'm actually going to peel back these flex cables just a little bit more from the sticker here. Sometimes you don't have to peel them back any more than they already are. These little arms that stick out are going to be what allows us to stick this back in nicely. We'll go ahead and gently align the screen there to where the connectors want to start going in. Take the tweezers and gently start pushing on each one of the arms. I'm going to work, kind of work back and forth, shimmying them into the connectors. You kind of feel when they've reached the back and they'll all look uniform as well. Not quite there yet. It'll kind of look like that left one there. 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 You can fold down the flaps now. Make sure they're all nice and secure. Just like that. And put back whatever sticker we have left. Grab a charger and plug it in. This way we can activate that battery and get it to charge up. Verify that the display and the touch still work and that it works off the charger. And let's go ahead and power this watch off. Now I'm just going to gently put the screen off into a position where I have access to the border by kind of gently bending it right there so it doesn't naturally want to shoot back to the edge. I've got my cold press glue gun with the blue tip. We'll screw that on there and then I'm going to try to uniformly pipe the glue on to the force touch gasket. Now 
and we'll do this all the way around. There we go. We'll move back up on the other side and I can line up the brackets there, the antennas. Push it down. And I prefer to see some squeeze out if we're getting. Make sure it went down on all corners. Get some acetone, isopropyl alcohol, and a clean room wipe or Falcon 530. I'm ready to go around the border. I'll take my nail and I'll kind of dig it into the crevice there and we'll uh, remove all of the residual adhesive while it's still in a, a viscous state and we can clamp it up. There's a couple ways we can do this, but one of the easiest ways for the use that don't have clamps is going to be using a rubber band. Everyone has a rubber band lying around. I'm going to go back and forth over it several times, get it nice and tight. Oh, it looks like I just turned the watch back on. No problem. And keep this on there for quite some time. I like to go overnight, but it being cold press, it's gonna be basically cured within the hour. Go ahead and turn it back off so we don't drain the battery. If you use too much pressure, that adhesive might get too thin. If you use a, a clamp and you're not quite sure how much pressure you're applying on it, the adhesive might get squeezed out up the sides and into the watch and thin out that adhesive so it doesn't have a good uh, a good grip. But if you don't give it enough pressure, you're going to have gaps uh, and potentially cause a, a watch to be completely unresistant to, to liquid. Not that I would consider this watch resistant, uh, factory new resistant to water, but we're going to give it the best chance by giving it that nice even bead of this glue. This cold press glue, it doesn't harden like uh, a lot of glues do. It remains in somewhat of a, of a bouncy state, which allows for the screen to still activate with force touch sensitivity. And it also gives that the screen kind of that cushion that the gasket provides uh, as well so that it, it's not uh, the glass isn't pressed up against something extremely rigid. Otherwise, it would have a much easier time cracking uh, on impact instead of having something to absorb the impact. Uh, uh, yeah, once this is uh, once the adhesive is cured, we'll be good to give it one last cleanup just to make sure there isn't any residue. And this watch is back to full live charge. As you can see, replacing the battery might not be as tricky as you thought it was. I hope that after watching this video, you feel more confident in trying to do this battery replacement yourself. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.